Hi everyone, it's Dan from Kaizen Sports. Today we're going to look at some different striking games that you can play for both Key Stage 1 and for Early Years Foundation Stage. There's just a few things you'll need. Firstly, an A4 piece of paper is perfect and all we're going to do is just scrunch that up into a ball. Each child will need one each. And even better, if you've got a drink of water with you today. While the children are just getting those pieces of paper, just a really quick kind of heads up around the kind of things that we're going to be doing today. We're going to be doing some competitive work and we're going to be doing some cooperative work as well. So for this reason, the children will need a large piece of space to work with. So chairs and tables tucked away if you can, everything cleared off the desk. And as always, safety is paramount to us. So make sure that you've been very safe and hopefully there'll be either parents or a teacher present as well. If you are playing at home, that's completely fine. Again, all you need is that piece of paper and a wall. I'll give you a minute to get yourself ready and then we'll make a start. For those of you that have just joined us, welcome back. All you'll need for this activity is one piece of paper for each child. And as always, make sure you set up the playing area so it's nice and safe. We're going to look at some competitive games today, playing against each other. And we're going to look at some cooperative games as well, working together as part of a team. So, first thing we're going to look at is Frisbee. And I'm going to explain that, how you play it on your own as a one player and then also how you play the game with your partner. So, if you're playing one person, just like me, because there's no one else around here at the moment, all I'm going to do is throw my ball like I do as a Frisbee. So you can see this in Ultimate Frisbee, or it might even be used for when you're walking your dog down at the park and has a Frisbee at hand. So, all you're going to do is start with the ball, pointing it close to where the opposite elbow is, or the waist, Bend in the arm and then all you're going to do is straighten your arm and let the piece of paper go. And hopefully, with our backhand throw, we can throw it against the wall and then we can catch. If you're playing the game with a partner, all your partner's going to do is stand three or four steps away and cup their hands around like that, almost like they're hugging a tree. They're going to stand like that and this hole here is going to be the target. The striker, or the person throwing the ball, is going to try and use a frisbee throw so that the ball loops and lands in the hoop. To make the game easier, you can move, hoop, uh, you can move closer with the hoop, and to make the game harder, you might make the hoop a little bit smaller so that the thrower has to be even more accurate. We're going to play for only 90 seconds and then we'll ask the children to swap over. So we need a server or a target who's going to stand like that a few feet away. And you need a striker, which is going to be the person with the ball, that's going to use the frisbee throw. Once they get it in and the ball lands on the floor, they're gonna pick it back up again and go again. Let's see how many we can get in 90 seconds. On your marks, set, go. And if you're at home, of course, playing against the wall, every time you hit it and it bounces back to you, that's worth a point. There will be some times, like just then, where the ball hits the wall and falls to the floor. That's completely fine. We just pick it up and we carry on again. Remember, we're not working on catching today. We're working on striking. So it's the throws and the striking of the ball that I'm interested in. As always, once you've practiced it with one hand, you make sure that you practiced it with the other as well. So even if you're playing with a partner and you're throwing the ball into their hoop, Make sure you practice with your right hand and with your left hand. Oops. If you're at home, you might use some socks. Socks are a little bit easier because they bounce a little bit more straightly off the wall. Pieces of paper are a lot more difficult because they bounce off at different angles. We're gonna play just for 20 more seconds and then I'll explain the next bit. Obviously with this game, you might have to experiment using different angles, different distances. You might move closer to the hoop. You might move further away. 
you might throw it on what we call a flat trajectory where the ball doesn't go up and down much or you might throw it on a looping trajectory where actually the ball goes quite high up and then quite high down. Time's up. Either way, you're now going to swap roles. So the person that was the hoop is now going to have the ball and the person that had the ball is now going to become the hoop. 90 more seconds to practice. Then we both get to turn each. Off we go. You've got a choice when you play this game as well. You might stand straight onto the wall and pull out your frisbee almost like you're pulling out a sword. You might stand sideways to the wall with your shoulder facing it and again pulling out your sword and a big movement so that the ball hits and comes back. Or you might stand sideways on, half facing and half facing away. Again, we can experiment, we can use trial and error. That's one of the things we're very good at in school, trying out loads of different things. And if it works, then our brain carries on doing those things. And if something doesn't quite work, that's okay, because our brain learns from failure as well. And that helps us to get better. Last 30 seconds, I'm just gonna practice on the other hand as well. The more I practice, the better I get. If you're at home and you've been doing these activities and joining us for the last few weeks, you should notice a marked difference in your coordination, your throwing skills, your catching skills, and your striking skills. Last 10 seconds. And time is up. We can put a big tick next to Frisbee. Fantastic frisbee done. And next up, we're going to hone in on hockey. This one's going to be slightly different and we're working at a different level. Hopefully the camera's zoomed out far enough so that you can see what I'm about to do. So, all you're going to do this time is start with the ball on the floor in front of you. Just like that. Hopefully you can see that. And all you're going to do with your other hand is use it as a shovel and you're going to scoop up the ball. I can either do it with my right hand, where it's kind of a scooping, pushing motion, or I can do it with my left hand. So again, we have our ball in a scooping, pushing motion. I'm going to try and push the ball and catch it back to me. Again, if you're on your own, like myself, you're going to play it against the wall and then catch it. If you're playing with a partner, your partner is going to stand as a low hoop. And the striker's job is again to lift the ball up so that it lands in the hoop. Get yourself ready, we're going to play for 90 seconds. Off you go. I'm just gonna do it with my left hand so that you can all see. So I've got the ball on the floor. I'll just move the camera down a little bit further for you as well. Sometimes it is quite difficult to see. So I've got my ball, now I'm gonna do a scooping motion. For younger children, they might find this difficult we're having to use a gross motor skill in using our whole arm, but we're also using very fine motor skills. Moving your fingers to be able to shove it under the ball before we then flick it back up. To make the game easier, you can always get closer to the wall. And to make the game harder, you can always back up further away from the wall or from the hoop. 30 seconds left. Make sure that you practice with both hands as well. I'm practicing just with my left here because if I use the right, you won't be able to see what I'm doing very well. Just using one hand to scoop the ball up. We can always add more power onto these shots as well. Instead of scooping just here, we can always move our hand much further back so that when we come through, it's a much bigger scooping motion. Last 10 seconds. Give it a few big scoops if you want. And time's up, swap over. If you're the server, you're now going to become the striker. And if you're the striker, you now become the server or the hoop. 90 seconds, off you go. Because we've seen it quite a lot now, I'm going to try and practice with my other hand, my right hand. So again, I've got the ball in front of me. All I'm going to do is try and scoop 
and catch. We've only got 90 seconds, so we're gonna try and fit in as many repetitions as we can. The more we fit in, the better we get. And obviously here we've got plenty of time. Well, we haven't got plenty of time. We've got to fly through it pretty quickly, but because we're doing plenty of repetitions and a lot of the activities are quite similar to the previous weeks that we've done, it allows us to compound our learning, building week on week. That accumulative growth as we start getting the hang of things and then consolidating. We try not to switch from activity to activity to activity in terms of a range of different things because that's far too complicated and doesn't give the children enough time to try and remember things. Which is why in maths you wouldn't work one week on number lines and then the next week on division and then the next week on trigonometry the next week on fractions and decimals and so on. We work on one thing at a time and once we've got that pretty much nailed, we can then move on to the next bit. Last 10 seconds, scooping the ball against the wall or scooping the ball up so that it lands in your partner's hoop. And time's up, well done everybody. Hockey done. Next up, we're going to do handball, and this is one of my favorites. With handball, all we're going to do is use our throwing skills, which we worked on the other week. So it's a little bit like the shot put. You're going to start with your hand, but instead of it being by your ear, it's going to be slightly behind. One hand to aim, just like we've worked on before, and then we're going to swap hands. This back hand here is gonna move forward to the front hand, and the front hand is gonna come back. So the swap, this hand goes forward, this hand comes back. And once we do that, we open our hands to let the ball go. So again, if you're playing at home, you can play with the wall. If you've got a partner, one of you is going to make a hoop while the other person tries to throw the ball in that hoop. If you are playing on your own and you haven't got access to a wall, you can always throw the ball to yourself. And you've got a few options here. You can either throw and try and get it to land in the hoop or option B, if you do have a wall, you might even throw and then try and make it back in the hoop yourself. Either way, you've got 90 seconds. Off you go. Start with the ball just behind where your ear is, pointing where you want the ball to go. If you point upwards, the ball's going to go a lot higher. If I point slightly lower, then the ball's going to go lower as well. So you can almost use your front arm as a sight to aim where you want the ball to go. We make sure that we practice on our left and our right. That helps us to become good with each hand when we practice. Oh, might have to open a window in the moment. It's very, very warm. Already nearly halfway through our activities. Handball at the moment, pushing the ball up against the wall or into your partner's hoop. Each time we practice, we do get a little bit better. If you're struggling to throw over arm because it can be quite difficult, throwing under arm is just as good. Having the ball here and throwing it under arm against the wall or throwing it so that it goes up into your partner's hoop. You might play the game where you catch it as well. There's several variations. Ultimately, as the class teacher or the TA, it's your class, it's your kids, you will know them far better than I ever will. So feel free to tweak the practice for what suits them. Time up, we're going to swap over now. So if you're the target, you now become the striker. If you're the striker, you now become the target. Swap over, 90 seconds, off we go. The main aim here is to try and build up our competency within the skills that we're doing. And all we mean by competency is we're trying to get better. And the more we practice something, the better we get at it. So 
some of you might have done these activities before. Some of you might remember what we said last time about the handball throw. It's a little bit like a cannon, starting with the ball here, and then with the cannon we push it forward like a slingshot, a cannon, a catapult. So hopefully we can transfer some of those skills that we worked on the other week into the things that we're doing now. Last 30 seconds, get the ball into your partner's hoop. If you can, you can throw underarm or overarm. Either's fine. After this one, we'll have a quick drinks break because it is very warm. Hopefully you've all got water with you. I don't know how it'll be in the classroom. I mean, all the windows should be open for that ventilation. And if you're in Leeds, like me, it's actually snowing a little bit, which is quite cool. Literally, it's very cool, it's freezing. And time up. Well worked, everybody. Go and grab yourself a quick drink. And if you've got any bits of paper or socks that are on the floor, now's a great time to pick them up and get ready for our next round, which is going to be boxing. That's something we've kept from last week because I know it was very popular. So, get yourself ready. I had another piece of paper somewhere as well, I'm not too sure where it's gone. <clears throat> Lost. Lost in the abyss. Last 30 seconds to get yourself ready. If you've just joined us, welcome back. Today we're working on striking skills part two. So we're going to be looking at six new sports and we're going to be playing some slightly different games. At the moment we're working cooperatively to try and get the biggest score that we can. And the next activity we're going to do He's looking at striking within boxing. All you'll need is a scrunched up piece of paper, whoops, or if you're at home, a rolled up sock is perfect. So let's look at the boxing side of things. We're now going to use the wall again if you're working on your own, throwing the ball up and using your hand to jab it against the wall, nice and simple. If that's too hard, using your fist because it is quite small, you can use your whole hand and slap the ball against the wall if you want. If you're a little bit more competent, we can jab and hopefully the ball comes back to us. Again, if you're playing with a partner, your partner's going to stand, hug that tree, make a really big hoop for your partner to throw in. And all your partner's going to do is throw up the ball for themselves, punch the ball so that it lands in the hoop. We're going to play for 90 seconds. Off you go. So this can be quite difficult, especially if you're quite young as well. So the challenge here might not be to hit it against the wall and catch it. Your challenge might simply be just to be able to throw and to be able to hit the ball. Throw and hit. Throw and hit. As you start becoming a little bit more competent, it might be throw a hit and a catch. And once we become much more skilled, you send a throw and then a punch against the wall. As always, we make sure that we use both hands. I'm just gonna go in and use my left hand now. And again, it's a lot easier with a sock because they don't bounce off the wall at funny angles. A piece of paper does, it's very tough. Just using our front hand at the moment. Again, if you want to, you can mix it up and you can always use your back hand. Using the back hand is going to be slightly different where you're going to throw with the front and then it's going to be your hand that's furthest back, which you're going to hold at about shoulder height. And all you're going to do is bring that one forward to push, oops, to push against the wall. Hopefully you've been here in other weeks where we've worked on throwing and catching skills, being able to throw accurately is the important bit because the better the throw, the easier the punch will be. Swap over, if you're the target, you now become the striker. If you're the striker, you are now the target. 90 seconds, off you go. As we've done before as well, you can always bounce it off the wall. Oops. And try and get it in a hoop. You can do that as well. You might make it harder by doing a straight, using your backhand to push and get it through. Now the final challenge would of course be oops, punching it against the wall and then catching it. 
Oops. It does take a lot of practice. And every time we practice, we get a little bit better. You can see at the moment, there's loads of balls strewn all over the floor. And that's maybe a sign of failure. But as far as my brain's concerned, it's learning every time. So the more goes we have, the better we get. Sometimes it'll go well, sometimes it won't, but your brain learns every single time. That's what I've got to keep doing. Keep practicing, keep getting better. You'll be the same with your spellings. You'll be the same as you tie your shoelace. We always try to get better. A lot of the times as well, I will talk and kind of give extra instruction on what to do with your hands, what to do with your feet. But there's usually a bit of a fallacy in coaching. Whereas actually, as we know, you guys are incredibly bright and you're very, very good at working things out for yourself. So actually, sometimes it's just enough to be able to watch what's going on and copy some of those ideas. Trialing out things for yourself, finding out what works and what doesn't. And you might even copy other people in the classroom. There might be someone in your class that's fantastic at doing a punch and a catch. In which case, copy the things that they're doing and try and make them your own. Time is up. Boxing done. Next up, we are on basketball. And this is one of my favourites because there's a couple of different throws that you can use in this game. So, the first throw is what we call the chest pass. And with the chest pass, you're going to have the ball in two hands with your fingers facing towards you. There, my fingers are facing towards me with my ball here. And all I'm going to then do is push the ball out. So we start here at my chest and pushing the ball out just like that. If you're playing on your own, you can push the ball against the wall. You can catch or get it through your own hoop. Or if you're playing with a partner, again, one of you makes the hoop and the other one's going to do a push into the hoop. Option B, instead of doing a hoop, you can do an overhand shot. So holding the ball above your head and all you're going to do is flick your wrist and straighten your arm so that the ball moves forward. Straighten my wrist. Flick my wrist, sorry, and straighten my arm. And again, if you want to do that, you can do that with the aim of trying to get it in your partner's hoop. 90 seconds, off you go. Personally, I prefer the chest pass. So I'm going to stand pretty close to the wall, fingers pointing to me, and then I'm going to push the ball out. Again, hopefully we should have practiced some of these skills in other weeks. And that gives us now a firm foundation to start building and making it a little bit more sports specific. If we try and jump straight into the sports, it often doesn't work. We haven't got the underlying skills. It'd be like trying to learn number bonds before we actually know what order the numbers go up in, before we know its numerical value. Last 30 seconds. Practice, practice, practice. Again, you might mix it up a little bit. We've got 90 seconds, so there is an opportunity to do a few different throws. Make sure you practice with both your left hand and your right hand. Get it in the hoop if you can. You might have a specific, specific spot on the wall that you want to keep hitting. Oops. And time is up. We've done basketball. The final one, one of my favourites again, is football. So all you're going to do again, your partner's going to make a hoop but this time they're going to make the hoop, much like in the hockey game, on the floor. So they're going to bend down and create a hoop. All your partner's going to do is take the piece of paper and they're going to try and gently kick the ball up into the hoop. We use pieces of paper so that they're nice and light. If anything does go wrong, the piece of paper is just going to bounce off the child and they should be completely fine. If you're at home, again, you can either play against the wall looking to kick and catch, or you might even be able to throw up and get the ball through a hoop. 90 seconds, off you go. 
We're going to do this one round and then we're going to go into a competitive match. Playing against each other, we're playing with at the moment. But we'll practice it playing against an element of competition now that we've worked on the skills. If the game's difficult, you can obviously get closer to the hoop. You might make the hoop even bigger. If you're finding the game too easy, take a step back. Or you might even make the hoop a little bit smaller or smaller still. So again, there's various different things we can do here. I want to try and challenge the children. You will know them better than I will. You'll know how they're getting on in class. So feel free to use a few of those ideas if you need to. We can use our left foot. We can use our right foot. I'm trying to go for a kick and catch if you can. Catch isn't the main focus, but it'd be nice if you could. Again, we've worked on catching in other weeks, so hopefully we've built up some level of competency. Remember, you're still working as a team at the moment, trying to get the ball in your partner's hoop. And time's up, swap over, final part before we go into our one versus one battle. If you've got the hoop, now swap with your partner, and your partner now becomes the hoop or the target. 90 more seconds, off you go. Oops. Again, what we're doing, especially for early years, foundation stage, key stage one, some of these skills are very, very difficult. But we start at the beginning. The more we practice, the better we get. If you guys in the classroom at the moment are finding some of the skills particularly difficult, don't worry. It'll come with time. It just takes lots and lots to practice. Your aim might be to do just one very well, and that's fine. Even as adults, we get things wrong as well. We're all here to learn and to try and make things better. Oops. Last 30 seconds. I've got into a good rhythm now. He says. Again, if you want an extra challenge, like we worked on last week, you can always throw the ball up and then try and kick it on the way down. It's going to be a lot more difficult because the ball travels a lot further. A much easier option is just to let the ball go and then swing your foot. So again, we're working on coordination, dropping the ball and striking your foot through at the same time. Time's up. Well worked, everybody. Grab yourself a drink, collect the pieces of paper off the floor. And within the next minute, we're now going to play a competitive game. It's going to be a one versus one battle. And if you're at home, we'll make it a battle as well. All you need is a couple of extra rolled up pieces of paper or a couple of socks. You've got a minute to do that now and then we'll start. So... I'm going to create a goal for myself because I'm playing on my own at home. So all I'm going to do is put one there and one there. I'll move the camera down just so that you can see. Two together and all we've got there and there. That makes our goal. And that's what we're going to be trying to shoot in. If you've got a partner, you can do exactly the same thing. Go and create a goal and you're going to have one goalkeeper whose job it is to move around and try and stop the ball going in. And this time the striker has to try and score. I'll just move my camera out a little bit further. Hopefully you can see the goal that we have there on the floor. I'm going to make it just slightly bigger. There we go. So here is the challenge. Go and get with your partner. And this time you're going to use the frisbee throw. One person is going to be guarding the goal for 90 seconds, trying to catch or block any of the shots from the striker. The striker's job 
is to use their ball and do a frisbee throw, almost like pulling a sword out and trying to throw the ball in the goal. If you're at home, you're gonna try and throw it in the goal and bounce it back to yourself. If you're at school, you're going to try and throw the ball past the person who's doing the guarding. As always, it's very, very important that you guys play safely. So make sure that you're in a safe space and if you can, try and use pieces of equipment that aren't chairs or tables. 30 seconds to get yourself set up and then we'll make a start. In the meantime, you might have a think about how close or far away you're going to be from the goal, how much power you need to get on it. Are we ready to make a start? On your marks. Get set, go. Just 90 seconds and we'll swap over. So we're throwing the ball against the wall. Hopefully we can get it in the goal. If the challenge is too easy, like it is for me at the moment, I'm quite good at throwing with my right hand. So all I'm gonna do is roll my goal so it's actually a little bit smaller. I'm gonna try and get it in. That one didn't, that one did, that one did, that one did, that one did. It's probably a little bit too easy for me still. So I'm going to make it smaller still. I really want to try and test myself on these games. Again, if you're playing with somebody, you can make their goal bigger or smaller. We try and practice with both hands as well. You might even create extra point scoring. So if you score with your left hand or your less dominant hand, that might be worth more than one point. Again, these are only ideas. You guys know what you're capable of. So feel free to change the game based on your ability. Last 30 seconds, see if you can score past your partner. Remember, if your partner catches the ball, all they're gonna do is throw the ball back to you so that you can have a go trying to score again. There's a second way to play this game that I'll explain in a moment when we swap over. Last 10 seconds. Oh, that's a lot harder, this one now. And time up. There is a second way that you can play the game if you want to. You can have the goalkeeper, instead of trying to block the shot, what they're gonna try and do is move and dodge out of the way of the person that's throwing the ball. So, if I'm playing as the goalkeeper, the striker will have the ball, and if they throw the ball and it manages to hit me, on my shoulders or lower, they score a point. But if I manage to dodge out of the way, then that's a point for me. So again, we're still working on throwing and striking, but this time we're gonna try and hit a moving target. So you've got a choice. You can either do that, or you can have the goalie actually trying to save the ball. 90 seconds. Let's play again. Off we go. For those of you that are playing at home, can you try and beat your previous score? Again, you might change the size of the goal. You might change the hand that you're using. You might even create an imaginary crossbar that you're going to try and hit, almost like the crossbar challenge. It might be a mark on the wall, maybe a pattern, maybe a bit of lighting where a shadow's been cast. You can try and hit the same points over and over again. As always, we pull the sword out from our hip. We start here and we can always add a twist. We talked about that in other weeks as well. A twisting motion to add even more power onto your shots. Last 30 seconds and then we'll move on to hockey. Hockey's a very good one when it comes to uh, developing fundamental skills. Not only do we have to control our own body, but we have to control a stick and a ball. Hockey, very difficult sport. It's also a very, very popular sport. Last 10 seconds. Can you try and score past your partner one more time? If you're at home, can we try and fit in three more catches? One, two, three. Fantastic, good stuff guys, we've done hockey, we're now moving on. Hold on, no we're not, that's a lie. We've done frisbee, we are now moving on to hockey. So the same rules as before. My hockey skills aren't quite as good as my frisbee skills. So all I'm going to do is make the goal a little bit bigger to increase my chance of scoring. And as before, I'm going to kneel down on the floor and try and scoop the ball 
into the goal. Again, feel free to set yourself up with a partner, either who's going to try and dodge it out of the way, or their job might be to try and stop the ball, much like a goalkeeper in football would. Get yourselves ready. And off you go. So again, the more of a bigger scoop you make, the further the ball goes. A little scoop means that the ball will only go a short distance. But if it's a very big scoop, the ball will go much further. Another way of thinking about this is with your hand, it's a swinging motion into a push. It's not a whacking hitting motion, it's a scooping motion. So think about your hand like the pendulum on a grandfather clock. You might think of it as an elephant's trunk and all you're going to do is make sure that you bend your fingers slightly so that we can scoop under the ball and pick it up. If you can score against your partner, that's fantastic. If you want to work together, that's fantastic as well. If you're playing at home, that is equally as fantastic. We're here just to practice and to get better. As we spoke about before, the seven different variations to so feel free to chop and change. Speaking of which, change with your partner. The goalkeeper now becomes the striker. The striker now becomes the goalie. Make sure you practice on both hands. Off you go. Each time we use that scooping motion. Again, with younger ones, it might be that you have to have your hands under it to start with and then lift it up. And as we get better at coordinating, we can start moving our hand further and further back to get a bigger and bigger scoop each time. Very good for hand-eye coordination, this one. It's what we call a novelty movement, a movement that we don't do very often. There aren't many sports that I can think of where the ball is on the floor and you need to scoop it up. But that's obviously where transfer of learning comes in. There might be other things that we've done that are pretty similar that we can now use. If you've played a game like marbles, that's a superb game for fine motor skills. Things like this will also transfer across to little things like being able to hold a pen, paper, knife, fork, spoon, being able to do buttons on a coat, being able to do the zip, all the difficult stuff. We do that because we're developing our fine motor skills. And time is up. Final one we're going to do before we take a break is handball. So again, this is probably one of the more common throws that you'll use. It's what we call the overarm throw. So one arm pointing to the goal, which I'm going to make a little bit smaller again. So I'm quite good at this one. And our other hand, swap places. There we go, just like that. One hand in and we swap. Swap over again to make sure you've got your striker becoming the target person and the target person become the striker. 90 seconds, off you go. To add in extra power, which is what we always talk about, you can always rotate your body a little bit. So we might stand half facing the wall, half facing away from it, so we're kind of in between. All I'm gonna do is then move this hip so that it comes a little bit further forward. It's like I'm twisting my whole body as I go into a ballerina spin. The only difference is when my hip comes to here, I'm going to move my hand and throw the ball at the same time. I'm gonna practice on both sides, because that'll help me to get better. If you're getting quite good at it, I've been getting quite a lot of success, so I'm going to move back now. To make it even harder, I might need to add in even more power into my shots. And again, you can play the game where you're trying to throw it at your partner's shoulders or lower, or you might play the game where you've got to try and get it past your partner and into the goal. You might even want to work together and still play that hoop game so that you're playing as part of a team. It's entirely up to you. We always make sure that we throw out several variations so that you can play the game at a level that suits you and your children. I'm always gonna be on screen doing the activities as well. So feel free to go around the classroom, support those children that are struggling. 
It might challenge those people that are striving ahead as well. And time's up, good stuff. We're gonna do a handball one more time before we have a quick break. So again, if you're the target person, you're now the striker. Sorry, if you're the goalkeeper, you're now the striker. And if you were the striker, you are now the goalkeeper. 90 more seconds before we have a break. Off we go. A lot of the time, this is what we call trial and error, where the kids will practice things and they will get better as time goes on, even without much instruction. That's why sometimes I might talk for some prolonged period of times. Other times I might just repeat what I've said so that the message drips in. And other times I might practice for 30 seconds without even saying anything at all. This allows the children time to ensure that they try out different things and they auto-correct. They'll do some things that they realise haven't worked and they'll make changes themselves without people having to intervene and make those interventions. 30 seconds left. Keep practising, keep getting better. Last 10 seconds. See if you can score past your partner. If you're at home, see if you can score into the goal that you've made for yourself. And time is up. We've done our top three. As always, go and pick up your pieces of paper or your socks and then grab yourself a drink because what we're doing is hard work. Let's clean it up. Off we go. I'm tempted to open the window as well, but there's lots of traffic outside and I don't want lots of noise to come into the room. Three activities left to go. The boxing, the basketball, and then we'll finish with football. So a couple of these balls I'm going to put back down to make a goal again. One there, and one there. And I'm going to use the sock as we move on to our boxing. So as before, with the boxing you can either push the ball with your front hand, you might push the ball with your back hand, and the person in the goal has to either dodge the hits or they have to try and save the ball. It's entirely up to you how you do it. We're going to go for 90 seconds again. We've got enough time. Off you go. And of course, if you're at home, it's an op great opportunity for you to work on those boxing skills as you safely push the ball against the wall. This is all to do with timing, coordination as you strike the ball against the wall. If you start getting good, you might use your backhand. As you become better still, you can either move further back or you can increase the size of the goal. I mean, I'm going to stay more or less where I am because I'm not good, that good at punching. Pushing the ball with my left is something that I definitely need more practice on. Told you. Last 30 seconds. Again, if you're struggling, make sure you focus on the throw first. If my throw is too far in front, it makes it difficult. If my throw is going too far back, it makes it very difficult as well. So with the throw, we want to make it go up and down pretty much in front of us, like we've done in our other weeks. And that makes the hitting and the catching that much easier. And swap over. If you're the goalkeeper, you now become the striker. And if you're the striker, you now become the goalkeeper. 90 seconds, off we go. We'll make sure that we finish a couple of minutes early today as well, teachers. I know that there's always transition time. 
I know that especially some of the little ones might need the toilet, they might need a drinks break. Just a couple of minutes just to put the classroom back together and reset. So we will finish at least five minutes early for you because I know that's important that we have time to progress onto other things as well. It's not just PE that rules the roost, it's important that we get equal time with a lot of other subjects as well. Hopefully this is building up a lot of different skills. Throwing, striking, catching. Certainly the throwing and catching should be the byproduct. But then we're also working as part of a team. Even though we're working against each other, we're still working cooperatively as well. We're still both playing by the rules. We're still both taking it in turns. We're still both trying our best. We're still both getting the ball and then handing it to the person who needs it next. So actually, even though it's a competitive game, it's still very much steeped in cooperation. Both people need to play by the rules and display good sportsmanship. And time is up. Next one, Ron, is basketball. So again, you can have your partner in the goal as you try and push it past them. You might have them as a hoop. You might try and hit them. You might even, and we'll allow it just on this one because it's more of a looping shot than a power shot, is if your partner wants to stand, super still like a lamppost, your partner's going to get the ball, and when they do an upwards throw, they're going to try and get the ball to travel through the air and land on your partner's head. Now, we're not throwing it at our partner. We're not using the chest pass to get it there because we don't want it to hit them in the face. We're trying to get the ball so that we loop it up so it hits your partner on the head. You can either do that at home or you can shoot for the hoops and try and catch or try and catch a chest pass. You've got a few variations. It's up to you how you do it. 90 seconds, off you go. I might do a little bit of each. You might create your own circuit for yourself. Or you might do a chest pass, a throw with one hand, a throw with the other hand, and then back to chest. You might create a hoop for yourself to score in. You might throw it up so that it strikes you on the head. You might play with a partner and you might change the rules of the game slightly to make it even better. There's a few options that we can use. I'm not very good at this, so I've just had to make my goal a little bit bigger so it's easier for me to score when I'm doing my moves. 45 seconds left, halfway through the first bit. Again, see if you can get the ball past your partner. We're using a range of different skills. Some of you, you might even be able to trick your partner. You might pretend to throw the ball one way, but then actually throw the other way instead. We call it deception. We call it a dummy, a fake, a trick. There's loads of different words for it. My favorite is probably deception. We deceive our partner. We pretend we're going to do one thing, but then we do something else instead. We pretend, we trick them. And swap over. If you're the goalkeeper, you are now going to become the striker. And if you're the striker, become the goalkeeper. 90 seconds, off you go. If you're at home like me and you've been doing this, you'll have built up a lot of these skills now week on week. So actually, when it comes back to going to school and playing games with your friends, doing physical activities, doing sports, doing physical education, doing all those things, you will be much better than you were before because you've practiced and practiced and practiced doing it lots of different times. Repetition is the mother of learning. And all we mean by that is, repetition is very, very important when it comes to learning. Sometimes it might feel like you're doing the same things quite a lot of the time. Well, that's exactly the same with tying your shoes. You don't just tie your shoelace once and think, right, done it, nailed it. It's the same with numbers. It's the same with learning new spellings. We sometimes have to try out that spelling over and over and over and over and over again before we finally get it. But once we have got it, 
we can usually spell it right most of the time. Our brain stores certain pieces of information so we can use it whenever we need to. And it's the same with all these things on here. Once we become very good at it, our brain can use that skill or that superpower whenever it wants to. And time up, we're going to move on to the final one. It's the one that I absolutely love doing, kicking the ball into the goal. So I'm going to make the goal nice and small because I'm quite good at this game. Fingers crossed. I'm going to try and kick the ball into the goal and then try and catch it back. You might have a goalkeeper. You might have somebody with a hoop. You might have somebody who's trying to dodge out of the way of your shots. It's entirely up to you how you do it. 90 seconds, off you go. Whoop. I might need to make my goal a little bit bigger. I'm struggling here. And we're back. Again, if you're at home, you'll be building up a lot of skills here. If you're at school, you'll be able to play against another person, which is good. Teamwork, competition, that competitive side, it's all very, very important. Sometimes you might win, sometimes you might lose, and that's okay as well. It helps us to get better. When you're doing your spelling test, you may get a higher score than your partner. You may get a lower score than your partner. It's nice to win. But the main thing is, is that you're getting better. That's what we're here to do. You're here to get better at everything. You're here to get better at spelling, to get better at English, maths, science, drama, art, music, history, technology, modern language. Of course, physical education, learning how to use the most important tool you will ever have. Your body, looking after it, maintaining it and finding out how we can use it to its fullest potential. And change over, final round. If you are the goalkeeper, become the striker. If you're the striker, become the goalkeeper. <laughs> if you're at home, we have 90 more seconds and then we'll have a nice big chill out because I know you've been working hard. Off we go. You might try and keep a rally. That's two, three. All we mean by a rally is how many you get in a row. Five. Oh, didn't catch it. Six. Oh, I was in the zone then. 17. 17's my record. Last 30 seconds, everybody. And then that is PE done for the day. Physical education, learning how to use your body in lots of different ways. Today we've looked at using six different sports to develop our striking skills even further. We've looked at working with a partner, We've looked at working against a partner. You might have borrowed or magged pie some ideas off your partner as well to try and improve your own set of skills and ideas. And we've done loads and loads of practice of skills that we can use to transfer across to other skills. Last 10 seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, Three, two, one, and time's up. Well worked, everybody. Before you go to your next lesson, make sure you have a quick drink of water. Make sure that you pick up all the things off the floor and return the classroom to how it was before. It's been lovely working with you all again. Stay safe, stay active, and I'll see you all again next week. Thank you very much, and goodbye.